My name is Ruby, and tonight I'm going to speak on the, the full armor of God. But before, we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to come to you and thank you for getting us here safely, Father God, for waking us up in our right mind, Father God, for giving us the strength and the courage to stand on your will no matter what, to read your word, to pray, to meditate, to fast, Father God, keeping our minds straight, steadfast on you. I thank you, Father God, for building me up. Because two years ago, I would not be up here saying anything to anybody, but I'm here. I don't know if I'm nervous. I'll find out in a minute. <laughs> Amen. So thank you. So, Ms. Wanda, if you could start with the scripture. We'll get right in. I'm going to come out of Ephesians. So Ephesians 6.10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Not yours, but his. Put on the whole armor of Ruby, God. Put the mic all the way up to your mouth. The whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Amen. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer, and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So, Miss Wanda, if you will, we'll start with the slides. And I'm going to be back here because I'm short. I had the podium, but I couldn't see over it. <laughs> so this is how we fight our battles. We put on the full armor of God. How many of us know that God is the full armor? God is the full armor. He is the armor of light, the full armor. So once you put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, and we're going to top it off with some prayer, right? We can't leave home without that. So having some technical difficulties with this fan in my dress, sorry. <laughs> Why is it necessary to put on the full armor of God? In Ephesians 6, 11 and 13, the Bible tells us, it says, put on the full armor of God that ye may be able to withstand, to stand against the wiles of the devil. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. The wiles of the devil. For those of you who do not know what that is. So according to GodQuestions.org, wiles are tricks or manipulations designed to deceive someone. And the wiles of the devil are those clever schemes used by Satan to ensnare us through temptation, threat, and intimidation. Samples of wiles of the devil, I mean Satan, sorry, devil, Satan, same thing. Acts 5, 3. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? So because we're saying read your Bible so that you can get built up, we're going to have you read that when you get home so you can find out what happened with Ananias. So in Matthew 4, 3, and when the tempter came to him, who is him, Jesus, he said, if thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. So what is the evil day? The evil day would be considered the worst day of your life. 
Job in the Bible experienced an evil day. It seemed like he experienced an evil lifetime in one day because everything happened to him. Everything unimaginable happened to Job. But the fact that Job was a God-fearing man and did not stop, the fact that he was a God-fearing man and did not stop him from suffering that trial, he lost everything. Regardless of his losses, he did not lose his faith or curse God. Continuing on, examples of an evil day for most people, most people like you and I, would be losing your job, your lights getting cut off, your gas getting cut off, the car getting repossessed, getting an eviction notice, the death of a loved one, getting a divorce, getting dumped, the list goes on and on. Who is our enemy? In Ephesians 6.12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Who is not your enemy? Your spouse who just emptied out your bank account is not your enemy. Your friend who lied on you is not your enemy. Your disrespectful and disobedient children, they're not your enemy. Your boss who passed you up for a promotion and gave it to someone less qualified than you is not your enemy. The neighbor who keeps flirting with the spouse, not your enemy. The person who almost ran you off the road is not your enemy. So I'm going to pause here. So your enemy is the spirits operating within those people, not the flesh. It's the spirit that's operating inside of the person. So the battles between good and evil or light and darkness. So I use John 10.10 because that's a popular one. So John 10.10, the thief cometh but to steal and to kill and to destroy. He wants to steal your inheritance in heaven any way he can. But God, who is the light, he said, I came that they might have life and that they may have life more abundantly. The belt of truth. Can I say that I read so much about the... The armor of God, it was so much, and I am not going to nearly touch the surface of it, but I hope that you learned something. David Chadwick said, it is the way that it is, oh, excuse me. David Chadwick said it this way, in the moments of hope devotional. The first piece of armor is the belt of truth. By its very definition, it's exclusive. It means something is true and other things are lies. The evil one is the father of lies, as in John 8, 44. Every lie finds its origin in him, and every other piece of the armor of God is attached to the belt of truth. So if you do, if you do not begin with truth, you'll never defeat the enemy. And Jesus said, God's word is true in John 17. So can I say the belt of truth before I go to this slide? In the, the armor for the Roman soldiers, they had a belt that held their dagger and it also held the sword, but the breastplate connected to it. And everything was pretty much secured by it. And without the belt, everything would kind of like the breastplate would flop all around. It couldn't be frayed. It had to go completely around the body. And the word of God is the same way. You can't have partial truth. You have to have complete truth. So the belt of truth is the most important piece of the armor of God. It is the foundation piece. The belt of truth sets the believer apart from the world. God's word is true. If we stand on his word, the foundation of our spiritual walk and our lives will be set on a strong and solid foundation, able to withstand all the snares of the devil. Examples of truth. Biblical examples of truth. John 1, 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by God, and without Him was not anything made that was made. John 14, 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father 
but by me. So examples continue, Psalms 119, 160, thy word is true from the beginning and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Timothy 2, 3, 16 through 17, all scriptures are given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. God is the truth. So we can all agree on that. If you can keep that in the forefront of your mind, everything else is going to fall into place. The breastplate plate of righteousness. The breastplate of the Roman soldier was used to protect the torso, thus protecting the vital organs, like the heart, the lungs, the liver, the spleen, and so on. Without a sturdy and intact breastplate, a blow anywhere on the torso could prove to be fatal. For Christians, Righteousness is associated with the protective breastplate because in Proverbs 11:4 it states, Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. So I'm assuming here that he's talking about death as in the separation from God. But the breastplate of righteousness shields us from the fatal attacks of Satan. What is righteousness? To be righteous is to obey God's laws. Always remember that it is God's righteousness that we must put on and not our own. Isaiah 64, 4 says or reads, But we are all as unclean thing, as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we do fade as a leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. We can't be righteous outside of the Lord. We have no righteousness outside of him. We're as an unclean or filthy rag. So in Psalms 19, 172, my tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. God's word is righteousness. 1 Corinthians 15, 34, awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. 1 John 3, 4, whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Peace means oneness or wholeness. The gospel, which means good news, is the forgiveness of sins and access to and oneness with God through faith in Jesus. Soldiers needed shoes in order to prevent injury to their feet, thus allowing them to continue the battle with sure footing. Can you imagine being a soldier and not having shoes on, traveling and fighting? You're going to step on rocks, rubble, twigs. Somebody could stab you in the foot with a sword. Not what we want. So next slide, Pete. Thank you. We as Christians must continue on the journey of spreading the gospel of Jesus and of the kingdom of God to everyone that we encounter. Standing boldly on the word of God, we need the proper footing to stand. The footing is the word of God, right? So if we got the word of God in us, then we can go forward. We can spread that word. We can tell everybody we come across who Jesus is and what the kingdom, God, a kingdom of God is all about. So we need sure footing, right? So Romans 10, 15 reads, And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Why is it called the gospel of peace? God will establish peace in your life if you have faith in him and obey his word. 
God will establish peace when he returns. In Isaiah 2, 2 through 4. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of God of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they war or learn war anymore peace so in john 16 3 these things have i spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye have tribulations but be of good cheer i have come to overcome the world so rest in god's bosom trust him in everything consult him in everything that you do absolutely everything the shield of faith. So if you you have truth and the gospel, then you're going to have faith if you believe what you read, you believe what God says, you believe that he is who he say he is and he can do what he say he will do. So the Roman shield the shield of faith. The Roman shield was sometimes referred to as the door. The shield was the first line of defense. The enemy would have to get past the shield in order to get to the soldier. The shield protected the soldiers from the arrows and the spears of the enemy. God is our shield. The only way the enemy can get to us is if we let down that shield. So you let down a shield by sinning, by falling out of alignment with God, by not believing that he is the truth, that what he said is true. When you start living a life that falls outside of the will of God, you have let down that shield. So in order to keep it up, you're going to trust God, read your Bible, pray, meditate, talk to him, walk with him, eat with him. Let him become part of your DNA. Right. So in Psalms 91, 4, he says, Come, he says, cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Proverbs 35, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. He is your shield. So once you have become a Christian by surrendering your life to Christ through faith, you must not be deceived by thinking that you can overcome sin by the shield of works. There is nothing you can do in and of yourself. It has to be with God, through God, right? So outside of Christ, your expected end will be failure, after failure, you will fail every time, giving in to the temptations of the devil. You must always use the strength of the shield of faith, which is God, our Lord and Savior. He is the shield. How do we develop and strengthen our faith? In Romans 10, 17, it reads, So then faith comes by, cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Go to church. Go to Bible study. Read your Bible. Pray. And can I just say a sidebar? When you pray, pray is not just you talking to God, you asking God for something. you got to be quiet and listen because he will talk back to you. So Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. 
in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path trust him he will direct your path soldiers wore helmets to protect their heads because a blow to the head could prove to be fatal christians need to always be mindful of our thought patterns we must protect our minds and thoughts from intrusive and parasitic thoughts from the evil one restrict what you allow to enter into your ear gates and your eye gates avoid anything that causes you to want to sin or i mean causes you to sin or want to sin can i just say i stopped watching regular tv because i couldn't turn the tv on without seeing a highly sexual sin i mean scene profanity homosexuality so if you watch it you keep watching it thinking it's just entertainment you will become desensitized to it and then you will be accepting to it right so you have to pay attention to what you allow yourself to hear and to see and who you keep company with so in Romans 12:2 in the amplified I know I was thinking about you when I did this one and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove to yourselves what the will of God is that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you So Philippians 4.8, Amplified. Finally, believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. So you put good things in, good things will come out. You put bad things in, bad things will come out, right? So Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. He was selfless. He was humble. And that's how we should be, selfless and humble so this is an offensive weapon the sword of the spirit which is the word of god this piece of the armor is used to attack the enemy jesus masterfully wielded this powerful weapon he attacked the enemy with scripture blow after blow after blow christians need to learn to master this piece of armor by reading the word of God. The word of God should become a part of your DNA. The sword of the spirit. So Satan, here are some examples of how Satan tempted Jesus and how he used the sword. So in Matthew 4, 3, it reads, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread and Jesus countered with in Matthews 4 4 but he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God now what was he gonna do with that because that was true right so in Matthews 4 8 through 9 Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said it unto them and said it unto him, all these things I will give thee if you wilt fall down and worship me. So in Matthew 10, 4, 10, Jesus said unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only 
shalt I serve. Now, how are you going to, I know that he's the little God of this world, right? Because he's wreaking havoc. But how are you going to give God what already belongs to him? Because did he not make everything? Does he not own everything? So, Satan and how he tempts Christians. And this is just a few examples. So, he may say, you are a failure. You will never amount to anything. So, in Philippians 4.13, you would counter with, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. He may say to you, you will never be able to stop doing drugs. You are going to die. In Isaiah 53, 5, but he was wounded. Who is he? Jesus. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. So in Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart the intents of the heart. The enemy is no match for the power of the sword of the spirit that the spirit holds. Slay the enemy with the word of God. That's your sword. That's your weapon. Because anytime you decide you're going to fight the enemy, if you use the enemy's weapons, you want to curse back because somebody cursed back at you. You want to hit them because they hit you. You want to lie on them because they lied on you. You're going to lose. This is Satan. That's Satan's game. Those are his weapons. We battle in the spirit because that's where everything is going on at. Yes, in the natural, we see a whole bunch of stuff, but that's just a manifestation of what's going on in the spirit. So you're going to fight with the word of God. I just threw this one in for good measure because I really like this. So we have a, a soldier here who's kneeling down. He has a sword planted firmly in the ground. His head is bowed. And there's a raging tiger there, which I imagine is his spirit. Like he's praying, like really doing warfare. And he says, the devil saw me with my head down and thought he'd won until I said, amen. Amen. Because that's how I feel when I be praying, especially when I'm into it. Next slide, please. So prayer. This is the final piece of armor. Prayer gives us protection and strength to fight the enemy. Prayer reminds us that we should put our reliance on God and God alone. Without God, we have no power against the evil one. Without prayer, the armor of God would be useless to us. Prayer is about relationship with God, not about begging God, pleading to God, Lord, can you please give me this house? Yes, he wants you to have wonderful things, but he wants a relationship with you. He wants you to be family. So what does the Bible say about prayer? In Psalms 145, 18, the Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. I am calling upon you, Lord Jesus, because I believe that you are who you said you are. I believe that you can do what you said you will do. I have faith in your word. It is embedded in me. I'm making sure I eat it, I drink it, I breathe it. I want to get closer to you. I want to do your will. I want to do the works of the Lord. So in Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. That shows you how powerful it is. He didn't say if you pray. He said pray without ceasing. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Pray, have faith, right? So what does the Bible, oh, this is a continuation. So Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth in, helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Matthew 6, 6. But thou, when thou prayest, 
enter into a closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So some people, they pray and they want spectators, right? They want people to see, oh, I can pray a masterful prayer. It can last for 20 minutes. God's not interested in that. He's interested in the pureness of your prayer, your conversation with him, the pureness of it. So you do it in secret where nobody can see you, but you and God, it's just the two of you there, and he will honor it. So in Matthew 26, 4, 41, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You may want to do good. You have good intentions. But that sin, because Satan monitors you and knows your weaknesses, and he is going to dangle that thing right in front of you. If you do it one time, nobody will know. Just one time. You can take a drink, even though you're an alcoholic, going to AA, having people think that you're recovered. But people will know, because the devil will get you out there and leave you. Once you get in trouble, he's gone. Off to the next one. So in conclusion, and a long conclusion, God has given us spiritual tools to use to gain victory over the enemy. All seven of the pieces of the armor need to be skillfully, needs to be used skillfully, remembering that all power comes from Christ. Not you, but Christ. When we stand on truth, righteousness, the gospel, faith, salvation, the word of God, and prayer, we will be more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Remember that when you pray in the spirit, you should have Your mind, I said the here, but your mind, the mind of Christ, his heart, and his priorities in the forefront of your mind. Prayer is where you draw spiritual strength from God. So, God is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the Word. He is the truth. He cannot do any, you cannot do anything unless he sanctions it. He is your everything. He gives you everything that you have. If you abide in him, he will abide in you. He is the armor of light. He gives you everything that you have. That's the same one? Okay. So he's the full armor of God. Read your Bible, talk to him, meditate on him, and pray. Fast, obey the word, obey his word. Have faith that he is. When you do all of these things, you will have truth, increased faith, peace, a mind that stayed on him, salvation. You will walk in righteousness, and the sword of the Spirit will be sharp and deadly to the enemy. I think that's it. Thank you, guys. It's been, it's been real. Amen. Come on and clap your hands. Give God praise for her. Stand on your feet and just give her a round hand clap of applause. Ruby, we thank God for that. It was excellent. A mark of excellent. Your PowerPoints was very, very direct and right on. I've never seen it put like that before. A tremendous blessing from the Lord is upon you. I know you're fearful. But it was something that had to be released out of you. So that you can see where God is taking you is onward and upward. As you continue to stay in the word of God, as you found yourself studying and reading and reading and reading the word of God, God just would not let you go. He continued to draw you even higher by his spirit. Understand this, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. It's a lot of they's in this world that you just talk to on a level that they could understand. So the Spirit of the Lord God is upon you because he has anointed you, even on this, his holy day. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap your hands, everybody. Give him praise.